and it stains us to the core. He says he's at peace with, he is, he is guiltless before those people who are at peace with him, and he is guiltless before those who are, or his enemies. Even his enemies say, yeah, we are enemies, and so that's right, he can attack us. But he didn't attack us un, unfairly, he didn't attack us unjustly, he didn't attack us without provocation. So he's basically saying from A to Z, nobody can accuse me. Even my enemies can't accuse me. Grandpa Farm. He says, if I have done anything, then I am, should be punished and the punishment would be just. Let them trample my life into the mud. Let me be destroyed in this world. I don't know what that guy's doing. I think it's a, probably a triathlon or something to that effect, but he's really getting trampled. David starts by saying, they're pursuing me. They're overtaking me. He moves on to say, <clears throat> they trample me down and then they kill me. My face, my life is in the dust. I'm dead. They have pursued me and ended their conquest of me. This is what they want to do to David. And he calls God to justice, to judgment over his enemies, to make a ruling in his case. And he says, if I'm guilty, I should be punished. But if I'm not, let those who are accusing me falsely be punished instead. He says, I want you to assume your seat as the judge. He says, arise, O Lord. A phrase that we have seen before. An intense phrase. A phrase that demands immediate action. And it's action based on God's righteousness. It's action based on God's character. And we can expect him to act, and we can expect him to act soon. He says, awake, my God. Now, God never sleeps, and he doesn't slumber. He does, you know, he's a, that's not part of what he does. But he does seem to be absent at times. He does seem to be asleep at times when it comes to helping us. And so David is asking God to awake and come to his aid come to his rescue. God will decree justice, and who better than God to decree justice? After all, it was God who defines justice. His character is just. His behavior is just. He defines what it means to be just, and he affirms that it is righteous. He tells us about that, his character. He holds humans to that standard of justice, and then he consistently acts to uphold that in our world. God is a God of justice and righteousness, and we can count on him. He searches our hearts and minds to see what is there. Justice in the Old Testament was a standard to which they were, upheld, to which they were held. They would come to the, to the elders of the community or to the, to the king, and both sides would give testimony and they would present their cases and then the king would stand up or the judge would stand up and he would say, this is the standard of righteousness. And he would say, how do you fit up against that? How do you measure up against that? And he would decide for or against either side or how much either side was guilty. God looks at our hearts. He looks at our intentions. He looks at our thoughts. He looks at our dreams. He looks at our actions. He looks at everything that we have and are. And he measures those against his standard of justice. And David asks that God would make him secure. Because without God, there is no security in this world. We found that out a couple years ago when the stock market collapsed. We found that out a couple years before that when the, when the trade towers came down. Our security is in Jesus Christ. That is the only security that we have in this world. And so he asks God to judge and then he says, to, he tells us that God is preparing for judgment. God is his shield and defender. God will come to his aid. We read about in, in Psalm 3 that God was his shield, not only in front of him, but on the sides and on the back as well. God takes care of us. He is our refuge. It says in the NIV that he expresses wrath towards those who are guilty. I think we would probably say that he passes sentence on those who are guilty. He decides the innocence, he decides the, the, the guilt, and then he passes sentence on those, uh, on both parties. If it says, an interesting phrase, it says, he passes judgment if he does not relent. 
If God does not relent, he passes judge, justice. Now, most of the time we translate that word relent, repent. But we have a problem with that because we think of repentance as something you do when you've done something wrong. But God doesn't do anything wrong, so how does he repent? Well, God repents when he changes a course of action. He says this person is, is guilty of, of whatever sin they're guilty of, and then he says this is the punishment if I don't relent, if I don't change my course of action. We see the best example of that, I think, in Scripture in Jonah, where God has condemned the, the Assyrians, God has condemned the people of Nineveh, that's the city that's uh, sitting there. God has condemned those people and said, you are worthy of death if you don't repent. And then they say, God, we do repent. And God changes his mind. God changes his course of action. We see prophetic I love that phrase, prophetic pronouncements of doom in Scripture. But those can be changed. They can be erased in our minds and in our lives if we go to God in repentance. He is our refuge, and we, when he, we go to him, those pronouncements of doom can be done away with. God will sharpen his sword, and he will draw his bow, but he will not shoot unless the person does not change their mind. If they change their mind, God will change his. If they change their course of action, God will change his. And the picture that we have here in Psalm 7 is not of the arrow flying, <clears throat> but of the arrow just short of release, waiting, hoping, praying that the person who is guilty will come back to the Lord, that that person would reconsider and God is withholding his punishment for now so that we have time to repent, so that we have time to come to him and seek refuge with him. <clears throat> but then David goes on to say, if they don't repent, if they don't reconsider, they're going to be punished. God is an implacable enemy of evil. He takes a lot of heat because he's also very patient. But he hasn't forgotten the evil that is in this world. He hasn't forgotten the sins that, are, that have happened in this world. He will punish them, but he is very patient. He promised that to Noah. Every time you see a rainbow, we are reminded that God is patient and wants people to come to repentance. Now we're going to see the fate of the wicked. He says they are pregnant with evil. This is an interesting phrase because I think it kind of sums up what God does. 